Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to select multiple things from a list like this. You can see here my selection is appearing in another list and so that you can, you know, do whatever you want with the selected list, like send an email to all four users and instead of all of your users in your database. Um, this is using a custom state. So if you're not familiar with custom states, this is a really good example to just get familiar with it. So let's take a look at how this works. All right, so I'm gonna start us off with our repeating group here that's simply gonna display our full list of users from the database. I've got it set to search for users, no constraints, and the layout style is just a full list so that everything loads at once. I think I have about 10 users in my database right now. And then within the cell, I have an image for the user's profile picture and a text element for the user's username. I also have a checkbox, and I'm using the Ionic checkbox, which comes with the Ionic Elements plugin. And this is what we'll click to select or deselect a user. All right, so at the heart of this entire feature is a custom state. Now we're going to create a custom state that is a list of users, uh, specifically our list of selected users. If you're not familiar with custom states, these aren't values that get saved to your database. It's just a temporary value. You can think of it as a, uh, a field that gets saved to an element on your page, much like you have fields that get saved to a data type in your database. So custom states are temporary and uh, they get saved to an element on your page. So I'm going to create one here. And you can create custom states on any element on your page, really, but in order to stay organized, it uh, makes sense to do uh, elements that, you know, really have something to do with the state itself. So I'm going to select the repeating group, and then I'm going to click on this inspector element here. And you can see, you you know, as you add custom states to an element, they'll all list out here. We don't have any right now, so I'm going to add a new one. I'll click on that. And I'm going to give my state a name. I'm going to call it selected. Being as literal as possible is usually helpful. Uh, and then the state type is going to be user. And then this is going to be a list of users. Okay, so this is going to be our new custom state. It's going to be a list of users, and we've given it the label selected. So I'll create that. And you can see here, if you want to edit it, you can go back in there and do that. All right, so now we're going to create a workflow so that we can add users to this list. So I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to trigger it off of the checkbox. So We'll right click that, start edit workflow. All right, so our first workflow is gonna be when this checkbox is changed and only when this checkbox is checked. Cause we're gonna do a workflow right now, um, just adding people to that list. I'll do one in a second for removing them, but this one is only when it's checked, meaning we want to add somebody to that list. The action we want to use is set state. Okay, you might be inclined to go to make a change to something, like you want to update that custom state, but custom states have their own action. You want to use set state here. All right, so we need to select the element that we saved that state to, and that was the repeating group. And then we'll find our custom state. We only have one here. And remember, this is a list of users. So the value of this state needs to be a list of users. So I'm going to take the existing list, which is the repeating groups selected. Okay, you can see because we've created it now, now it's available as an option here. Repeating groups selected. This is the existing list. Then we want to add one. So I'll use the plus item modifier. This will allow me to add one more thing to this list. And the thing I'm going to add is the current cells user. Okay, and it's saying current cell because our checkbox is inside this cell for a user. Okay, so I'll show you that one more time. The value of this state, anytime we check the checkbox, is going to be the existing list plus the current cells user, so that we can keep that list still there. We don't want to replace the list with one person. We want to continue, you know, adding on to the list. All right, so now before I do the workflow for removing somebody, I'm just going to show you in another repeating group the value of the custom state itself because it's a list of users. So we can use a repeating group. Again, I'm going to remove the checkbox because we don't really need to do anything there. But I'm going to add here so that we can see uh, selected. Just a little label there so we can tell the difference between these two repeating groups. And I'm going to rename my repeating group selected. All right, so this repeating group is type user, but it's no longer a search of our database for users. This is going to be 
our custom state value. It's going to be this repeating groups selected. Okay, that's going to be the source for this repeating group. So let's preview this. Okay, so we'll wait till that loads. All right, so I have my full list of users from my database. There's a few of them, only some of them have pictures. And then you can see there's nothing here under the selected uh, repeating group because I haven't selected anybody yet. I have not changed that custom state to include anyone. So what happens when I click on this to select? Now we have one user here. If I click on that, I have another user there. Okay, so every time I check this box, What's happening? We're running this workflow here, where we're changing the state every single time. We're taking the existing list and adding a new user to it. Okay, so when I click on this second user here, it's taking this whole list and just adding this guy to it. All right, so this is the value of our custom state. Now look, if I refresh my page, this repeating group's gonna go away because remember, custom states are temporary. They don't get saved to the database unless you specifically do so you know, through workflows where you set something to equal the value of your custom state and have it saving to a record in your database. But we're not gonna do that here. All right, so how do we remove someone? So I'm just gonna copy and then paste this action so we have a little bit of a base to start. So this is when the checkbox is checked. I'll do this one when the checkbox isn't checked. Now, what's the value going to be for this state? Again, this is the, the uh, set state action. Where is it? Here. This is all you need to use when you want to modify the value of a custom state. You're not making a change to anything in your database. Okay, We are just working with a custom state. So the value of this state in order to remove a user pull it up here. Unfortunately, we don't have a minus item. I really wish we did. It would make things a lot more straightforward. But what we need to do is we just need to filter out the person that we've selected. So I'll hit filtered there. And then my filter, because this is a one of my, um, my data types, the user, I can use the unique ID. It's really going to be the easiest thing. So when the unique ID does not equal the current user's unique ID, or not the current user, sorry, the current cell's user. That's easy to get mixed up. Um, that's, th these are the list, this is the list of users that we wanna keep. Anybody whose unique ID is not the current cell's user. So that's how we lift this person out of that list, right? This one's a little bit trickier to, you know, spend some time looking at that, make sure that you understand that. It's easier, um, when your custom state is a one of your data types, unique ID is usually the best thing that you can use to filter something out. Uh, once you, if you have a custom state that is like just a general text uh, or just a number, your filter is going to look a little bit different, but it's going to follow the same principle. Okay, so again, the value of this when this isn't checked is going to be the existing list filtered. All right, and the filter we're applying is anyone whose unique ID is not the current cell's user's unique ID. So we select somebody here, or we actually we deselect someone here, and the remaining list will be anybody whose unique ID isn't this person's. And the reason we're using unique ID again is because uh, it's the easiest for, you know, when you're working with records in your database because every single item has a, a completely unique ID, right? So let's preview this and see how that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna select one, two, three here. Now I'm gonna uncheck this one. See how she went away? She was filtered out of that list. This one, now we're left with one. Okay, so this is pretty much how you create a multi-select. And then from here, now you have now you can manipulate this list and do whatever you want with this list. Let's say you want to select a list of users you want to send an email to. All right, so now I can do something like this where I have a button here. Do send email to, we'll just make this to show you all the little possibilities and things that you can do here. I'll take again the value of the custom state selected uh, count so I can count up how many there are so it'll say something like send email to three users right 
you can add a condition on there if there's only one um, to change the pluralization of that word. But let's say you selected three or five or something, it'd say send email to three or five users, right? And then when you click on this button, you can do uh, send an email to, or again, the value of our custom state, selected email. Okay, so now this is going to insert the email address, comma separated, for every user in that selected uh, list. And you didn't even have to save this to the database, it's just there for you. All right, and that's it. I hope this helped you understand custom states a little bit better, um, but also this feature is something that I get asked about all the time, this multi-select thing. How do I select multiple things to do you know, a secondary action to it? Uh, this is a good starting point for that. Thanks for watching.